Okay, here I am in my D&D &D area game again, in my new outfit where I kind of look like a demon. Well, we've already talked about that in a few videos, even ones that I did in this area, or in this game, not in this area. But, uh, you know, just flip sides of a coin on who's the adversary and things worked out of that. It's not really what this video is about here. In fact, I had a hard time figuring out how to approach this exact piece of the puzzle. For I feel that there are really maybe 10 or 12 ding special golden pieces of the puzzle that a lot of people don't have. And uh, I'd like to, I'd like for you to do something for me right now if you could. If I have perhaps rang that bell for you and made connections that you did not know, as in ding, which some of you are probably getting tired of, quite often I've probably made a connection and didn't make the noise. But put down in the comments if that's happened for you and if there was one that was an epiphany that stands out to you like I had no idea these people were that or I had no idea this was going on or that that's even how Europe got populated or that there were possibly boats that age old or what I might have shown you something. I'd appreciate it just to get a little feedback. So where I'm at now is at the fireside area in this area that was the last module that we went into and I keep getting invited in towards to do a dungeon or things like that so I, if it happens I'm just going to decline it. But what I decided I would do here is something like a fireside chat and this is one of the good places that they have a good little fireside so where we could come and just have a chat at grab an ale like you see the girl having right there uh, that girl well, let's just do this let's see that girl's name is see how, many, how much I can do her name is Portia P-O-R-T-I-A Portia now there's port wines and we know what a port is and as far as ships go but if I was to tell you that there goes an invitation let me knock it off. I've got such a high gear score in, for this area here that when people see me geared up and stuff they're just grabbing me. Plus my stronghold and um, my guild and alliance wants me to do things and they keep inviting me to do stuff. They're trying to get together kind of doing this video during a prime time. Where was I at? Oh yeah, so I just pick out this girl Portia. Uh, but that's also where we get the car Portia. And how that connection can be made. Yeah, she was a mermaid. Well, she's a maiden that lives in a port town associated with the water. Bet she can swim. But neither here nor there. Let's see. Let's sit down and have a little chat here. For what I thought about doing with this was starting out having a fireside chat and then some way zooming in on the fire a little bit if you can picture it. See if I can make something like that happen. And then start describing folklore. Something like that. A story from folklore. And then maybe a little puff from the fireplace comes out. It gets a little cloudy or I take a big puff off Gandalf's pipe and blow out smoke, which turns into a ship, and all of a sudden we start looking at something different. This would require a lot of editing and special stuff, though, and I do best, it seems, ranting over a picture or things. Hell, I've got a video of still from last, but before last Christmas that's basically saying it ain't about me, it's about the information I try to bring to people and stuff. And, uh, but literally the whole video is, I don't know, 30 minutes or maybe 45, my usual thing. And I'm basically just staring at this one picture like it was a doorway, which is what it was. 
and some symbolism around it and everything and I can sit and talk for 45 minutes and then whenever it ends I'm like you know I could make a part two I like sharing this knowledge because a lot of people don't know it and some people are somewhat lost oh and there's a great song about was lost and now found was blind but now I see and you hear things like that and you don't even know what the hell it means till it happens to you and then you're like wow and it's all around me and I had no idea but then all the time through my life I've seen blind people walking around in front of me and talking to me so I like to sometimes because I can find it to be very abrasive so I find sometimes I like to perhaps open a door for somebody and quite often when that happens a conversation ensues and it could go a lot deeper but I also find that if whenever I catch somebody depending on their alertness or awareness level if you will I get about 20 minutes worth of cramming their head full of something new information and then all of a sudden I must be going nom, 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 and it just starts burning so times people have to digest things and actually keep that on their plate and keep consuming that idea for a while before you can go on with another aspect of it this is found in all ancient societies and things like that where you get to a certain level and they let you know something new and you kind of think you know it all now you get it all figured out and you put that all together and then they tell you this is 3d chess let me show you something else and let me show you something else and then through those last few there there's kind of like some key puzzle pieces that's been in front of you the whole time and from way back at level five or seven they've shown you this thing and said things about it and then all of a sudden here at level 30 you're starting to learn something totally new and a new magic if you will from using the same essences for now I you know I used to think that all I could do was this this and this and make magic missile but you can actually make magic cannon you can also make a lot of things out of it. so now I feel like I've been rambling let me try to get to the point here <clears throat> I guess why I said that is if you've watched a lot of my videos I've talked about things like Genesis to give you one example let me get a pray in here. What does it look like up close? Ha ha. So I pray to my God. I sit back down. That gives me that little crown thing. And that crown thing gives me a slight buff because my God's with me. So how that works out. Anyhow. And everybody gets it no matter which God you have. And there's a lot of gods that are in the ancient stories. So I was trying to get at here, and I'm, where am I at in, in time here? I, I haven't even hit 10 minutes quite yet, right? Good. Um, oh man, how do I approach this? So we talked about Genesis two different times, if you've watched through all my vids, and especially the old ones, and if you looked at the older ones that I've pretty much turned off because it's me outside under trees talking and crap. And a lot of that was really for a group of people that are past that point anyhow, too. Um, but we talked about Genesis, and each time I told you there's more to this. This is me only telling you one story while looking at the picture. And people always say a picture's worth a thousand words, and it'd be like, yeah, but a thousand people could come up with what they think this picture's about and there's a reality actually of what this picture is supposed to be about strange things come to mind let me see if you can picture something in your mind a strange picture and see if we can get this there's a white square a little elongated like the screen here but it's all white okay 
and down here in the bottom there is a point like a pyramid like this that's made out of black and it's a solid triangle of black okay over here coming out of the wall straight across and then down at about the same angle as a pyramid is a black shape also so it comes out and down to the bottom and from the bottom up point point everything else is white what would you come up with and what could you come up with well what Frank Zappa came up with is this is a ship arriving too late to save a drowning witch yep a couple people pieces of construction paper and so on and it takes an odd mind to come up with that doesn't it so a picture can be worth a thousand words but I could give a thousand people that and unless they've heard this before they would never come up with what that was I had it on my book cover and stuff <laughs> and I remember showing it to kids and I drew it down there but uh, it's a modern art thing he actually had it in the gallery once for a while or something anyhow tails around the fire so that ale's got to be kicking in. Let's go ahead and go back to talking about Genesis here. And a lot of people cutting through right here. So, Genesis is a story that tells you about the formation of man. And it's just like the stories of Prometheus and other type of stories. And we find common bonds and things like they're built with clay and the soil of earth and everything and that's because it comes from a common story which it looks like a primordial part of comes from the Sumerians but other people had this for the people that weren't interjected to the Sumerians had this crap too so I've said it comes from a story long before that and one could ask well I'm sitting here in front of a fire telling a story and how long has this gone on well, I'm probably positive that Cro-Magnon men would sit around and tell stories and they had tales of old that they came up with and they would take a stick and hit the fire a few times and have the sparks go up into the air and start talking about what the stars meant and all these things and how you could see pictures in the stars out of zodiacs and so on right well the tale of Genesis can be shown in the stars as above so below everything happened and blah 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 and, of course, I can tear the Bible apart like crazy, but also, hopefully, in the same gist, you're actually seeing that there's a lot of truth into it for the little stories come out of all everybody, and it's a culmination type situation, a variation on a theme. Like if somebody did a modern interpretation of Romeo and Juliet, but it's done in such ancient times, people really go through life sometimes thinking, well, that was old times before that, everybody's ugh. And that's what I was kind of taught when I was a kid, yet we find out, no, it comes from way back when, and then actually, when they tell a story themselves, they say it was from long, long ago. Before bread was ever made, and da-da-da, and all this stuff, and you're like, well, fuck, how long, how, what? Yeah, so, it's not some 4,000 B.C., it looks like you might put a multiplier on that and say 40,000 if you're gonna call Cro-Magnon the Adamic man type that came out. But his genetics are still alive today and once we found all that out, that's very revealing. There's a lot of things that are very revealing about Genesis and its reality. Much like whenever I play this game at first we're fighting some barbarians and orc kind of things and well they make the game so it's tough but it gets a little easier and then you're on to the next guys which now are tough but then they get a little easier and they build it up that way and uh, well, well one strange thing about this game is uh, they were supposed to have dinosaurs of Cholt that area that I've showed you where dinosaurs are uh, a long time ago for they had a leopard come out in the mount years ago but didn't put it out in there and why why would that possibly be well maybe that's more like real life for we had to fight dungeons and dragons and monsters 
And then one day, we found out, hey, there's these dinosaur things, and they don't really quite look like the mystical tales of old. And every one of them looks like they're coated with something that looks more like a crocodile. So those aren't dragons and blah, blah, blah. But then as we get down into it deeper, we come to find out, well, hold on. It looks like they, they did have feathers. In fact, the dinosaurs were going on whole hog and whatever happened to them. Well, we find out a meteor struck the earth and it struck the earth so hard, it turned dinosaurs and T-Rexes into chickens. And we've talked about cataclysmic events, and I believe it or not, I have about five already ready to go, but I thought I had harped on the situation too much, and people started saying I was some kind of a cataclysmic guy. Put an ist on me about that. So I thought, well, yeah, I am probably running that into the ground, but I'm about to talk about some more volcanoes and things that happened that now they can see, well, here on the other side of the planet, that screwed everybody over it. Hey, you remember this plague that was real important that we talked about? Well, this volcano over here, you know, so it, it, it just keeps going on that things like this really affect the Earth. And they talk about global... No, that's fear-mongering bullshit. Oh, well, am I fear-mongering about it? No, I'm trying to make you extremely aware. And uh, if you do have some fear about this and end up doing something about it, that's great. If we were to keep the planet clean, that's fantastic, too. I mean, I'm all about Earth Day. I used to have this kick-ass shirt. It was like an ad in the back of some magazine. It had a picture of Earth and an ad below it. It said, Earth, a great fixer-oper, da-da-da, only 4.2 billion years old, da-da-da, somewhere in tear, pollution, da-da-da, but a great fixer-oper. And, uh, yeah. So I'm trying to hem and haw around a whole bunch instead of st going straight forward into this. Because some people will say it's racist. Other people will say, no, that's exactly what it says. And that's exactly kind of what happened. But then again, tales and mythology and looks like this and ends up being like that. But I see what you're saying. Right? Message in the clouds. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, the people of Genesis... Ended up being some people, oh, this dude's cool. He's got a squid head on him that's very much like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. They use psionic powers. Let's see if I can get over here. <laughs> Look at that. Davy Jones locker. Yeah, what you do is you get the character here and then you put a pirate hat on that you get from the pirate's keep thing and then, uh, and then you got it going on. See? So, Genesis. There were these people that were in there and, and I've, like I say, I've gone through this three different ways and here's a fourth and a reality and a puzzle piece that if you go through it you don't necessarily get but in the story there's supposed to be something that somebody did wrong that God everything was supposed to have been naive and stupid and I've made a video about this too in fact it repeats this concept just like it repeats a lot of other ones in your bot in your Bible about how hey man, these people are all together and they've got one language and they're about to build a tower up to heaven, which they are telling you is a city in the clouds, which we don't run into in our airplanes. People aren't understanding the idea and it was cosmic and blah, blah, blah. But anyhow, so they had to confuse their tongues and that's why everybody has a different language now. Well, if we study Proto-Indo-European linguistics and how it ran through and the four corners of the earth they talk about, that leads back to a Aryan language, if you will, Proto-Indo-European, if you will, now. 
but it didn't change anything what happened in World War II, only what we're told about it and the way we look at it in reality. And there was a whole lot more that came out of the story of Jacob and his 12 tribes of people that people ditched off and then look at the last in line that came in. That's the way it's kind of written out. But in reality, let's talk about Sumerians again. Sumerians have this iconography I've shown repeatedly of a master of beasts. In fact, I'm about to show you another video about the Gebel Erak knife should be out before this. And how there's a master of beasts concept that is in the formation of proto pre dynastic Egypt. And many, many people made the connection. And in fact, when the Gebel Erak knife was there, the guy at the dealership knew what he was looking at and what it meant and its significance. So, in the Sumerian tale, it's a little bit different and it involves another people actually who are primitive and there is a representative called Enkidu of those people and he brings them into his world and off of their friendship and watching him die he realizes the reality of it all and searches for immortality we've been there right the snake steals his fountain of youth for he can't get immortality he's only two-thirds a god and there's some to that coming up here which is written in that story right there, letting you know that there's something in that. In this tale of Genesis, here's your, here's your moment. In the tale of Genesis, ah, ha, ha, let me fix this real quick. There's a woman that grew from a rib, and then there was a magic talking snake, right? Well, in this game here, we have one T, they're magic talking snakes. Wise beings, much like an owl and so on, they know the mysteries of it all, and immortality and blah, blah, blah. And this snake, which in the story is apparently allowed to be in this garden, reveals that the reason that you're not supposed to eat this one certain thing or partake of this plant, which a lot of people have said, you know, it's an apple. Well, there is a strange twist on the word apple that actually means the plant mandrake which Jacob uses, or his wife. In fact, they trade a night of sex with him for it, like a drug trade, to spend the night for him, but it's all because it helps barren women have children so they can have this magical 12. Back to the story of Genesis. Snake, very first of it. He tells them clearly that they will be as gods of this earth. That no, go ahead. And people have said, well, it's got to be this stoned ape thing, and it looks like that just keys to it. Well, maybe people, due to intoxications and being closer to God and having these feelings of intoxication, it led to the idea that, that where, that's where it came from, and it's used in religion, which I've shown, oh my gosh, in a lot of my vids. Cannabossum itself, the anointing oil, and so on. So these people were to be as gods of the earth. And it's not something that goes bing, but it does. For there's a change in humanity there. 
and these people became instead of a afraid of what's going on around them and unaware of things and magical creatures that you don't know what exist and things have magic and those snakes do too they can just do a little peck at you and you're going to die and that's venom and poison and all these things people are realizing and putting together is stories and how something is very powerful and you get these ideas out of it. Well, you see people back in the day holding snakes and doing these things. They had a power over that. They had a power over immortality. They had a power over the beast of this earth. They had the power over themselves long ago and realized that the training wheels came off. Long, long ago. Like when your mom taught you how to drive and uh, ride a tricycle or a bike with training wheels on it and they took the training wheels off and she's holding on to the back and you're going and you're saying I'm doing it I'm doing it and I'm doing it I'm doing it like you can let go again Ma. you can let go I'll try it I'll try it and if you look over your shoulder she let go a long time ago I'm doing it I'm doing it I'm doing it and she had let go long long ago and as long as you don't freak out and start wibbling around or keep looking over your shoulder, everything's going to be fine. You need to be look where you're going and what's coming up. Is there a car that's coming? So these people, it says clearly in your Bible, are gods of this earth. They became that. And that kind of pissed gods off because he didn't have so much power over them anymore. Apparently. Look at the story. In fact, he repeatedly tries to get their favor back and they keep flipping and flopping the other gods and all kinds of things. Right? They've got free will and everything. They've broken free. Long ago, before any of those stories I told you about existed, and they realized that the training wheel had come off long ago. And sure, there were some strange corners of the earth with people that they had never seen before, but they were so far advanced over any other people they were literally, due to any interaction whatsoever, whether it be a fight, and they go, what the hell is that? It's a bow and arrow. And they grab some of them after the fight, run off with them, and look at it and what they're doing and go, hey. Or perhaps there's a lot better interactions. Maybe those interactions went bad because those primitive people didn't understand. Other ones thought they were gods. of this earth well they were in fact you look at their mythology and things that I've explained and showed to you and it's all ancestor veneration from long ago and people who realized the training wheels had come off and some people that said you know you know when you're a kid and you're doing things and there's a kid these jumping curbs and all of a sudden some kid down the street's got a ramp and it's like two and a half foot tall and boom and a pile of dirt or something y'all are and that, oh, oh, there's another step. There's another step. Then you see a video of Evil Knievel, and you're like, oh. These people are master of beasts. Long ago, let's see here. There's a big cave bear head that's right up there right up there cave bear head we don't have cave bears anymore we got grizzlies and everything we're still masters of those can they kill you hell yeah we know some tricks but oh my god you know hey if i got a long spear pole arm i got a real good chance chances are they aren't gonna really mess with us here's lions here's lions facing this fire over this fire is a symbology that looks like a cut gemstone, but it's a winged creature. 
Looks more like buzzard wings, though, than an eagle's wings, and it sure doesn't look like my bat wings, which are wings of a dragon. Were there ever dragons? Oh, yeah. They still exist today in a long, drawn-out lineage. You had to go around the earth and kill off the dragon to come back in the solar boat of Egypt. Okay? The only person that could do it was Set. Why? They tell you he, he's the only one that wouldn't become hypnotized by the snake. Like the snake in Jungle Book. Snake. Slithering. He could do it. Well, if you look how things broke down, that has to do with the dragon people and stuff. What's, how does that work? Well, it all works together. The ancient Egyptians were a little bit of a culmination of some people had some stuff going on and some other people interjecting into them that had some other things going on and somebody walked in and flipped down the last piece and said, can you see the picture? And they actually made something out of it that they themselves would have probably never imagined. Or maybe they imagined it. Masters of this earth and they left their mark upon it. Your mark upon it might be a tree that you plant and it's grown up and now it bears fruit or is beautiful and someday some kid might make a tree house in it. There'll be a totally a different adventure for him. Your mark on this earth might be something as large as a pyramid. Or quite a few of them. And not just in Egypt. Showing you that these people were masters of earth in a different way. For stone and earth. They're masters of earth and beasts. And what kind of list do you need here? Well, they're not the masters of God. They are God. They dictated what he said. They are gods of this earth. No one on this planet is untouched by that knowledge and the knowledge of these people. No one on earth did it not better in humanity as a people. Let's see, I'm going to go somewhere. Nowhere on earth is it possible to go and not have their effects feel. You have to go someplace like Andaman Island or maybe some remote jungle in South America or deep in the bush. No, they've already been exposed. They've seen the planes flying over and things. Things have already happened. And they've already had some interaction. We try to minimize that now. At what point should we have stopped? Now that everybody realizes those people are going on, should we have stopped one or two steps before now? Should we even be stopping now? Well, all our diseases are so advanced now, you might just kill them from interacting with them. Yeah, that's screwed up, and we don't have stuff for it and everything. COVID, blah, 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 right? So, masters of this earth. Well, it's hard to talk about it in D&D &D terms in this ancient time before time before time, but I don't know if you know it or not. But now we've got these things that are like space docks, spaceships going, there's earth, we're in space. Oh, okay, um, okay, let me give you an example here of something. There's these people, 
they're the Sumerians, and they tell you that their gods live up in space, and they've got this badass castle that's built all cool, and I can't even describe it. There are things that are lapis lazuli and gems and stuff, and you wouldn't believe it. Well, here it is. I'll be damned if there aren't dragons here, too. Let's flying around. Well, are there dragons in space? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're part of it. Here's Gith people. They're from space. But so are the Squidhead people. Yeah, there's an interaction with Dungeons and Dragons that gets that. So you can talk to them, and they have a little lore that goes along with it, and it's very interesting whenever I hear the lore, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> but it's, people that have studied this stuff has folklore all up into it, and I'm not saying it's all, oh, well, it, it is. It's all right in your face right here. And here's an asteroid all around us right here. In fact, we're actually built into a little asteroid right here in our space dock that we've got or space port and in that effect we're the death star are we in the moon or we're in the death star well there's been a collision there's a bunch of rocks out here probably from mining out this area hey if you push one the wrong way it's going to go smack on the earth and then you would have been the anunnaki killing all the people off knock knock At what point do we realize that we're gods of the earth? Oh, we've helped everybody else and we're trying to bring it along. Oh, and we're all in one and everything, but damn well everybody knows that we're, there's one people that heralded all of this and are taking us to this point we're looking at. Not to sound selfish, over egotistical or any other bullshit. Let's just look at reality. We're all green. Well, there's these one fucking green people that did a lot of stuff that we're looking at. In fact, every object that you've got around you. From their architecture and the shapes of things that you have and simple things and tools and stuff. It's all a culmination of stuff. At what point do you realize that the training wheels came off a long time ago? There were people that realized this in a time long, long ago. They've been proving it for as long as we can think and talk about. Prove me wrong. Oh, from other points of view, people, oh, you did wrong, you did, th you did, what were you doing? We got us all here. You're here. That could have gone a totally different way. Believe me, from the point that people had little tentlets like this stuff, to the point that they were making casts like this, to the point that they're all of a sudden here with Popeye magic maps and I'll be damned if they aren't in space oh in a modern day it's not even PC to try to gloat or to have any type of pride whatsoever. In fact, to the point you don't even look at things in the proper ratio to be able to understand what happened. I try to expose it in my videos and show you little pieces and little pieces of the puzzle. You surely a long time ago a lot of you have figured out where everything is on the map and there's little pieces you got right here on all this map all ding 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 all over the place thing is they all interconnect damn straight and there's the portal right there 
It's a simple type of doorway. And from there again, oh, I can go so much more places. And wait, I can go in this land. And that's the hell land. I can go in this land, Protector's Enclave and everything. I've got the summer festival going on. I can go here, I can go here, I can go here. Go a lot of places of this earth and above. They are the people conquering death on a daily basis. They're trying to figure out and stop cancer and things like this. They have helped out others that are of an intelligence level to be able to help. Oh, it's all been them. Oh, it's all been them. No, they've helped out people that became them and us and them together. There's a togetherness and a sharing that keeps coming from these people that no other people like to show. It's very much not the same existence. One only sees it whenever they look at things from an outward point of view quite often. We get to look at things like that. Oh, uh, we could go to a couple of places now. Well, let's just go back to the Yawning Portal mentally. And go back to that little land there that we're looking in, that little blue marble. And then that little blue marble, one little bitty spot that no longer exists. That if you look at it, we're made out of boats. Hundreds of boats. And there is a giant well to drink of. The well of souls. From thousands of generations of people leading up to the person that you are now. You have a worth. You have a value. People are envious and hate you. Because they ain't you. Though we try hard to help everybody out, some people have a hard time being helped. Hercules is what one man, and he can pull off 12 labors. He can't do everything. Superman is a human he got exposed to kryptonite crypto night cryptic night this game is made by cryptic a company Some realize that Superman has made his own kryptonite. That Adam, in his extroverted ways, has brought this on upon himself. But he also knows the way out. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know if anything is clicked in my videos and what special thing that has made connections. Does this make a connection that no one speaks of when they speak of Genesis? Knock, knock. It's your turn to grab the beers. Peace.